This is Genesis chapter 46. And in this chapter, Jacob and his family go to Egypt to see Joseph. And the topic is going to be on life's journey. What to do on life's journey. And Israel took his journey with all that he had and came to Beersheba and offered sacrifices unto the God of his father, Isaac. And the first thing you want to do on life's journey is sacrifice. If you never sacrifice, you, you, it's not going to turn out too well for you at the end. Sacrifices is what makes your life better. In the moment of the sacrifice, it may not be what you had planned. But you'll, when you start seeing the results of the sacrifice, then you'll be glad that you did it. And it says in Romans 12, 1, to present your bodies a living sacrifice. We may not sacrifice uh, animals today, but you can present your body a living sacrifice, meaning when you wake up in the morning, say, today I'm going to sacrifice the things I want to do and do what God wants me to do. And secondly, to sacrifice the things you want to do to make somebody else happy instead, instead of yourself. So on life's journey, you need to make some sacrifices in every aspect of your life. Sacrifice your time to do something with the Lord, to pray, uh, read the Bible. So Israel took his journey with all that he had, and he came to Beersheba and offered sacrifices unto the God of his father. Now, his father, Isaac, had the right God. So be a father who shows your son the right God. And when he sees you sacrificing and reading your Bible, praying, whatever it is, he can one day say, you know, I'm going to go and talk to the God of my father. But in, it says, And God spake unto Israel in the visions of the night, and said, Jacob, Jacob, and he said, Here am I. You see, in the Old Testament, uh, bef before there was a complete written word, it says in uh, Numbers 12, 6, If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in visions. So Jacob is a prophet. And God made himself known unto him in visions many times. And you see, we don't need that today because he's made himself known to us in the Holy Bible. We don't have to have a different vision every day because we can get something new out of the Bible every day. And it always blows my mind how you see people make these uh, videos or these messages with something new that they got from God that's not even in the Bible. Yet they don't even know all of the Bible. You know, why would he give us something new when people don't even know the Bible yet? You don't even know all the prophecies in the Bible, and yet uh, God's going to give you new prophecies? That doesn't make sense. And God spake unto Israel in the visions of the night, and said, Jacob, Jacob, and he said, Here am I. That's the proper response. That's what Moses said when uh, God calls him out of the burning bush, and that's what, like what Isaiah said when he said, Lord, here am I, send me. And he said, I am God, the God of thy father. Fear not to go down into Egypt, for I will there make of thee a great nation. So, sacrifice. On life's journey, you need to sacrifice. The next thing, you need to hear God's voice. Jacob wasn't a stranger to God's voice. And the voice said, I am God, the God of thy father. Fear not to go down to Egypt, for I will there make of thee a great nation. You need to get to know the voice. And the best way to get to know the voice is to spend time with him. You see, um... When somebody calls you, you can tell by the voice who it is. And like if you call somebody and somebody else picks it up, you don't just start talking to them like it's the person you're trying to call because the voice is different. You see, you got to spend time with somebody to recognize, really recognize the voice. Do you hear the voice? And he said, I am God, the God of thy father. Fear not to go down to Egypt, for I will there make of thee a great nation. So he's telling him, fear not. 
on life's journey, don't fear. 2 Timothy 1 7 says, For he hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. If you think about it, there's really no need to be afraid of anything. Man, at best, all he can do is kill the body. But after that, he doesn't have anything he can do. He can't kill the soul. He says, I will go down with thee into Egypt. And I will also surely bring thee up again. And Joseph shall put his hand upon thine eyes. So don't be afraid. Hear the voice. Sacrifice. There's no need to be afraid because look who's going with you. God's going with you. Everywhere you go, if you're saved, you take the Lord with you. He's, he lives in you. He's your shepherd following behind you. And he's also leading the way because you're going by his word. He's leading the way because you're going by his word. He's in you because you're saved and the Holy Spirit lives in you. And he's following you because he's the shepherd. He's got every angle covered. And he's always walking circumspectly. And he says, I will go down with thee into Egypt. And I will also surely bring thee up again. That kind of reminds me of the rapture. He's here with us in the world. Egypt is the top of the world. But he's going to bring us up. You see, in the, in the world, the Lord is with you. And greater, 1 John 4, 4, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And he said, I will surely bring thee up again. And Joseph shall put his hand upon thine eyes. And he does in Genesis 50. And Jacob rose up from Beersheba. And the sons of Israel carried Jacob their father and their little ones, and their wives, in the wagons which Pharaoh had sent to carry him. So on life's journey, take your family with you. That's what Jacob's about to do. He's about to go on this journey. He's going to take his family with him. You see, if you're married and you have kids, you have a family. You have a responsibility. That's your first ministry. You need to take your family with you. And they took their cattle and their goods, which they had gotten in the land of Canaan, and came into Egypt, Jacob and all his seed with him. This is a fulfillment of something that God told Abraham in Genesis fifteen thirteen. In Genesis fifteen thirteen, uh, the Lord told Abraham, Thy seed shall be a stranger in a strange land. And you'll see, uh, you'll see that they're going into Egypt. They're a stranger in a strange land in Egypt. And they're going to be uh, eventually be in bondage to him. His sons and his son's sons with him. You see, he's bringing his family with him on life's journey. He's not leaving them behind. He's not going out and making a, a career and making his whole life about his career. He takes his family with him. His sons and his son's sons with him. His daughters and his son's daughters. Grandkids too. Not neglecting the grandkids. Have something to do with the grandkids. Make sure you do that. And his seed brought he with him into Egypt. Jacob had more daughters, you see, besides Dinah, because it says his daughters, plural. And these are the names of the children of Israel, which came into Egypt, Jacob and his sons, Reuben, Jacob's firstborn, and the sons of Reuben, the sons of Reuben, Hanak and Phalu and Hezron and Carmi and the sons of Simeon, Jemuel and Jamin and Ohad and Jacob and Zohar and Shuel, the son of a Canaanitish woman. Now, you'd be accused of being racist for, for saying this today. You can't, uh, many times you can't even say what somebody is. They get offended. And the sons of Levi, Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. And from Kohath comes You'll see later comes Moses and Aaron, Exodus 6, 18 through 20. And the sons of Judah, Ur and Onan. Those are the ones that too that got slew by the Lord and Shelah and Pharaz and Zerah. But Aaron and Onan died in the land of Canaan. And the son of Pharaz was Hezron and Hemuel, the sons of Issachar, Tola and Fuva and Job and Shimron and the sons of Zebulun, Sered and Elon and Jalil. These be the sons of Leah, which she burned to Jacob and paid in Aram with his daughter Dinah. All the souls of his sons and his daughters were thirty and three. So thirty-three. And the sons of Gad, Ziphian, 
and Haggai, and Shuni, and Esbon, and Eri, and Arodi, and Areli, and the sons of Asher, Jimna, and Ishua, and Isui, and Bariah, and Seria, Sira, their sister, and the sons of Beriah, Heber, and Malkiel. These are the sons of Zilpah, whom Laban gave to Leah his daughter, and these she bare unto Jacob, even sixteen souls. And I'm sure I butchered a lot of those names. But I was giving you an example of how when you read this, just try your best. Just try your best to uh, uh, pronounce it. And then you'll eventually hear some smart person or hear it on the audio Bible. And then you'll begin to pronounce it correctly. I try to listen to the audio Bible of it. And it's, it's hard to remember all of them. But just try your best on it. But with that being read... I want to go through and uh, I looked up the the meaning of the names. I just really like looking up the meaning of names. So if you're interested in that, here it is. Hanuk is initiated or dedicated. Falu, that's distinguished. Hezron, that's enclosed or blooming one. Carmi, that's a vine dresser or noble one. Jemuel, that's day of God. Jamin, that's right hand. Ohad, that's joined together. Jachin, whom God strengthens. Zohar, that's whiteness. Sh uh, Sheol, that's asked for. Gershon, that's expulsion. Kohath, that's assembly. Merari, that's bitter or flowing. Ur is watcher. Onan is strength. Uh, Shelah is prayer. Pharaz is a breach. Zera is splendor or sprout. Hezron is surrounded by wall, enclosed. Uh, Yemuel, one who has experienced mercy. Uh, Tola, a scarlet worm. Fuva, mouth. Job, one persecuted. And it's not the same Job. Uh, Shimron, watch. Sea red fear, Elon Oak. So, wow, Elon Musk has a Bible name. I never even noticed his name was in the Bible. Jaleel, whom God has made sick. Ziphian, expectation. Haggai, festive. Shuni, quiet. Esbon, toiling. E-regarding. So, those are the meanings of the names. And here's some more over here. Uh, Jimna, prosperity. Ishua, even or level. Is Ui, even. Beriah, gift or in evil. Sira, Overflow or abundance, Heber, fellowship, Malkiel, my king is God, Bela, devouring, uh, Areli, lion of God or son of a hero, Arodi, wild ass or rover. So if you're interested in that, I'm always interested in what the names mean, so I write them down. And I just don't want to just breeze through these names like they don't mean anything because you see people are interested in people you know when i go somewhere they say who is your dad who was your mom who was your uncle see people are interested in people that's why god put this in here and it also shows you about how good at record keeping god is he keeps some good records here but the sons of judah the line of the Messiah comes through Judah. You'll see that in Matthew chapter 1. Don't ever just uh, think this is just a bunch of names that you shouldn't go over. There are a bunch of names that you should go over. The sons of Rachel, Jacob's wife, Joseph, and Benjamin. And under Joseph in the land of Egypt were born Manasseh and Ephraim which Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar, a priest of On, bare unto him. Remember that Joseph got a Gentile bride, Asenath, 
just like the Lord Jesus got a Gentile bride. And the sons of Benjamin were Bela. Bela means devouring, and Beaker, a young camel. And Ashbel, opinion of God or short. Gera and Naaman, Ehi and Rosh, Muppam and Huppam. And Ard. Now Gera means fighter. And got some more of the names wrote over here. Naaman, pleasantness. Ehi, brotherly, are joining together. Rosh, head. Muppam, adorned one. Huppam, a chamber cover to cover our shield. And Ard is fugitive or rover. These are the sons of Rachel, which were born to Jacob. All the souls were fourteen. You see, Jacob took his whole family with him. On life's journey, he took his family with him. Your whole, his whole family matters to God. That's why they're all rode out here. They all mattered to God, and he took them with him. And the sons of Dan, Hushim, and the sons of Naphtali, Jazel, and Guni, and Jezer, and Shelem. These are the sons of Bilhah, which Laban gave unto Rachel, his daughter, and she bare these unto Jacob. All the souls were seven. All the souls that came with Jacob into Egypt, which came out of his loins, besides Jacob's sons' wives, all the souls were threescore and six. So 66 people. Here's the last bit of these names here. Husham, those who make haste. Jazel, allotted by God. Guni, painted or died. Jezer, image or form. Shelem, retribution or avenger. So you got 66 people there. All the souls that came with Jacob in Egypt, which came out of his loins, besides Jacob's sons' wives. So besides the wives, all the souls were threescore and six. And souls in the Old Testament ref can refer to the body as well in the Old Testament because they are the soul and the body are stuck to the f together. Unlike today, if you're saved, your soul's cut loose from your flesh. But it says, And the sons of Joseph, which were born him in Egypt, were two souls. All the souls of the house of Jacob, which came into Egypt, were threescore and ten. So that's seventy. Here it says sixty-six. There it says seventy. And they clear up some confusion. So you got, it says in verse 26, sixty-six people is the number that went into Egypt. But it's not including Er and Onan, who were also Jacob's grandsons. But they died. They already died, you see. It's not including Ephraim and Manasseh because they're already in Egypt. They don't make the trip. And then in the next verse, and, and in Exodus 1, 5, it says 70 souls. So 70 souls came out of, it says in Exodus 1, 5, 70 souls. All the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were 70 souls. For Joseph was in Egypt already. So the 70 souls that come out of the loins of Jacob. This didn't include Jacob's four wives or Joseph. He was in Egypt already. But it, it, inclu it does include, in, the, in Exodus 1, 5, it will include Aaron, and Onan and Ephraim and Manasseh. So that's how you wind up with 70. But then in Acts seven fourteen it says three score and 15. So you had 66, you had 70. And now it says three score and 15, referring to this, 75. And this number comes from Jacob's 12 sons, his four wives, his 59 descendants, including Ephraim and Manasseh, Serah, Dinah, Er, and Onan. So, that's how you figure this out. There's no contradictions in the Bible. You got to read it closely and figure out what it's talking about and which ones you would include in that number of people. Don't just jump to conclusions and say, oh, the Bible's just full of errors or nothing, because it ain't. So, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't forget his family. On life's journey, you sacrifice. You hear the voice. You don't be afraid. Take your family with you, and you're going to find out that the journey was well worth it. The journey was well worth it. And he sent Judah before him unto Joseph to direct his face unto Goshen. And they came into the land of Goshen. 
So he sent Judah before him. Judah, a picture of the Lord Jesus, who go, will go before you. And Joseph made ready his chariot and went up to meet Israel his father to Goshen and presented himself unto him. And he fell on his neck and wept on his neck a good while. You see, he goes to meet Israel his father just like the Lord is going to come and meet us at the rapture. And Israel said unto Joseph, Now let me die, since I have seen thy face, because thou art yet alive. You see, you're not ready to die until you see Jesus. Joseph, a picture of the Lord Jesus. And Joseph said unto his brethren, And unto his father's house, I will go up and show Pharaoh, and say unto him, My brethren and my father's house, which were in the land of Canaan, are coming to me. I mean, this kind of this could be a possible picture of the Son of God telling the Father of our arrival at the rapture. You could picture that a little bit. And the men are shepherds, for their trade hath been to feed cattle, and they have brought their flocks and their herds and all that they have. And it shall come to pass when Pharaoh shall call you and shall say, What is your occupation? that you shall say thy servant's trade hath been about cattle from our youth even until now, both we and also our fathers, that ye may dwell in the land of Goshen. For every shepherd is an abomination to the Egyptians. So the Egyptians don't like sheep or shepherds. Just as Jesus is an abomination to the world, shepherds are an abomination to the Egyptians. Egypt, Egypt is the top of the world. Jesus is the chief shepherd. Jesus said, Marvel not that the world hates you. You know that it hated me before it hated you. So the world has no use for shepherds or the blood of the lamb. It has no use for the Bible because it was written by the chief shepherd and he used a bunch of shepherds. Uh, the Egyptians didn't have a sacred lamb. So the shepherds, the sheep, they're an abomination unto the Egyptians. But the journey was well worth it. Jacob got to meet his son again that he thought was dead all these years. Just like one day the Jews are going to see Jesus Christ who they thought was dead and hadn't been resurrected. But this has been Genesis chapter 46 on life's journey.